What's going on you guys? It's Potato Jet here to talk to you about cameras and to remind you to always eat your vegetables just like this broccoli. Broccoli juices up your body and brain. It's seriously like eating smartness. You're gonna get sick less often. It's gonna help you manage your weight and give you all day energy because taking naps is for little b It's like Kale's little brother, but it's not as popular by hipsters, so nobody loves him anymore. Don't worry, broccoli. I'll always love you. Uh, I'm gonna go change my shirt. Now I keep comparing these super cameras to my iPhone and people in the comments are always saying, man, if that was a sad Samsung Galaxy would destroy the cinema airy camera. First of all, no, who, what? A smartphone is not gonna destroy a cinema camera. This is designed to fit in your pocket. This is designed to make Ryan Gosling look better than he already does to make sure that none of us average people will ever have a chance with Stacy's mom. In case you're not familiar with the Aerie Alexa camera, I made a video on which camera shot the Oscar nominated films. The Aerie Alexa shot more than two thirds of the nominated films this year. So I think it's safe to say it is the dominant Hollywood camera, but it's impossible to deny that these phone cameras are getting better and better every single year. Constantly constantly improving, closing the gap between a consumer phone camera to a professional grade cinema camera. So where do we currently stand? So we're gonna take this brand new Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, mount it right next to this lens here, and we're gonna go out and get some test footage. So let's see what we come up with. Super bright sunny day in Los Angeles. Which camera's which? Camera A or camera B? Again, camera A, camera B. Next sample, camera A and camera B. Wow, I'm starting to sound like an optometrist. First impressions, they're both doing a really good job. The fact that they're comparable means that Samsung's definitely doing something right. Camera B is looking a little bit sharper. So is that the cinema camera? Actually, no. Camera B is the Galaxy S9 Plus. Okay, so why does this Galaxy S9 look sharper than a camera that costs more than a luxury car? From what I can tell, Aria has never really cared so much about being the sharpest, highest res camera. They designed their camera to produce the most organic, natural looking picture. And that becomes a lot more apparent when you start filming people and skin tones and in my opinion the area alexa is the camera that gets closest to your human eye we're filming under direct sunlight which is not ideal but the area alexa's dynamic range kind of makes the light look a little bit smoother while on the samsung it looks like she's being blasted by a super harsh light i'm also like sucking in really hard <laughs> Don't breathe! Ugh. One of the things I really love about the Aerie Alexa is that it has built-in ND filters. ND filters are kind of like sunglasses for your camera, so you can open up that lens a little bit more and get that shallower depth of field. In other words, the background looks blurrier and looks generally more cinematic. Usually it's a dark piece of glass that you put into this tray and you drop it in in front of this lens, but the Aerie has three of them already built in, so you can literally push a button and it applies all these filters. Nice. Once we drop in this filter and go to a tighter lens, I don't think I need to tell you guys which one's which becomes pretty obvious. I mean, this looks like the title sequence to CSI Miami, and this just looks a little bit sad, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm just kidding. That's not funny. <laughs> oh God. That's I'm not funny. <laughs> now moving on to slow motion. What's something that's really cool to see in super slow motion? Well, luckily I have a lot of chunkiness in my cheek and my face. I'm doing this for a YouTube video. This is, <laughs> this is what my life's come to. So I met up with Steve and I had him throw a couple of punches. We just weren't getting the results we wanted, so I made the mistake of asking for. Just give me one like juicy one. Just one, just go do it before Dude. I fucking change okay. my mind. Here we go. Okay, go. Yeah. Oh! Oh my god! That one hurt! Yep, I was feeling that punch for the rest of the day. Now let's just take a nice slow look and appreciate all the fat in my face. Oh, the things I do for YouTube. You can go ahead and hit that like button now. The best part might be the look I make here where I'm rethinking my decisions. Like I can't even stretch my face out that far right now. How did that even happen? Brain cells are overrated. And plus you can make more by eating broccoli. Now Steve claims he felt really bad doing this, but uh, Steve, the camera does not lie. Clearly you were enjoying this. Maybe a little bit too much, Steve. Now let's get some dogs in this video because I hear that'll get me more views. Now, Samsung can actually go all the way up to 960 frames per second, which is much slower than the Alexa's 200 frames per second. But the issue with the Galaxy is that it can only record that frame rate for 0.2 seconds, which means you only have a fifth of a second to capture that action. And to give you an idea of how short that is, here's 0.2 seconds. And here's another 0.2 seconds. So I found it difficult to get just the right moment in slow motion, but it's definitely a fun feature to play with. And of course, Aries 200 frames per second is continuous and at ProRes, so it is definitely more built for professional use. Man, everything just looks so cool in slow motion. This is Mozzarella, by the way. She's a super cutie and she loves me, at least when I have food. Samsung does have a continuous slow motion option similar to the iPhone. There's definitely a loss in resolution, but definitely good enough to get some really awesome stuff. We're here in downtown Los Angeles. We got Jonathan over here. We got the Alexa and the Galaxy set up right over there. We got the Aperture 120D dome light here, which is honestly because coming one of my favorite LED lights at the moment. It's powered off one 
V-mount battery. And here's the shot with the Samsung Galaxy. The low light performance is definitely impressive for a camera phone. It was pretty dark there. We only set the light to 25% so that we don't wash out the background. Switching over to the Alexa, yes, look how beautiful that looks. Especially on this tighter lens, look at that bokeh in the background, I love it. Now Jonathan's gonna take off the softbox, so now it's gonna hit us much harsher. It's not gonna look nearly as nice, but it's really gonna test out the limitations of the camera, cause oh God, you see that? Now it's this harsh light smashing into our face, and it really tests the limitations of a camera. Get away from me, I'm allergic to you. Jonathan just found this random cat. He just picked up this random cat. It might have rabies. So here's the Samsung, ouch, obviously this super harsh light is making it very difficult to keep everything looking nice. And on the Alexa, it's definitely still a really sharp light, but the dynamic range generally keeps everything still in detail and it's far more forgiving. And this just goes to show that it's always important to do a good job of lighting or find good light, but the Alexa is definitely a lot more forgiving in times where you can't. Now, the most important thing you need to know about shooting on the Galaxy S9 Plus is that broccoli has a lot of enzymes that actually get killed off by heat, so it's best to eat it raw. That's how you ensure you get the most nutrients out of this food. I'm just kidding, I can't rip another shirt. This is a YouTube video. I don't have that kind of budget. Two shirts, you're crazy. Cameras are both set to 60p, so they're gonna be slightly slow mode and we're gonna be riding at night, so it's gonna be dark. A pretty challenging situation for any camera, but we're gonna see how they do, so let's go. So here's camera X. Why don't you take a guess at which one it is? Here are the same shots with the other camera. By now you guys have probably figured out that this is the Area Alexa. The lack of sharpness on the phone made it pretty obvious right off the back, I think. And earlier we talked about highlight roll off when we had really sharp, harsh lighting hitting our faces. But dynamic range also takes a really big part in the darks. If you look at the side of my motorcycle, you can generally see details on the side of the bike, but on the phone, it's all just bottomed out and black. So yeah, to nobody's surprise, the Area Alexa takes the win for low light capabilities. But interestingly, the Area Alexa isn't necessarily the best low light camera. The C300 Mark II and the Sony A7S, their ISOs go way, way up there. But the Aerie still holds its ground. Even though the Samsung's low light capability isn't to where a DSLR or pro camera is, it's still impressive. I mean, even just a few years ago, I would have never pulled out my phone camera at night. I should also point out that even though the Aerie Alexa is a very forgiving camera, the most important factor is how much you practice. A pro with a Samsung can definitely produce much better content than a beginner with an Alexa, I promise you. So always be learning how to get the best results out of the gear you currently have. Remember that a good camera is nothing without good lighting and good video is nothing without good audio. And absolutely nothing matters without good content. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to eat a piece of broccoli. DM me some photos of you guys eating broccoli and I'll send back some love. And by love, I mean a couple of heart emojis or something. <laughs>